check this out. I, uh, Ultimate Mordecai, all I saw was his thumbnail on a video. He uh, it popped up in my feed. And check this out. This is amazing. And because, again, we find more scripture that gives us a picture of what God really desires in his people. We got a lot of people that are saying, well, yeah, you need to have faith, but you need to obey. You need to do this. You need to do that. Hosea 6.6, 6, Old Testament. This is when the law was around. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Could that not be any clearer? Let's let's read it in context. Hosea 6.6. 6. So I was about to do more Romans, and I got led to this. Hosea 6.6. 6. Let's read all of Hosea 6.6. 6. Israel and Judah are unrepentant. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, that he may heal us. He has struck us down, and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day he will raise us up that we may live before him. What does that sound like he's talking about to you? Our Savior did the same thing. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. He is going out. His going out is sure as the dawn. He will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. He's complaining about their love. It's there, then it's gone. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. But like Adam, they transgressed the covenant. There they dealt faithlessly with me. There's that word, faith. Gilead is a city of evildoers, tracked with blood. As robbers lie in wait for a man, so the priests band together. They murder on the way to Shechem. They commit villainy. In the house of Israel I have seen a horrible thing. Ephraim's whoredom is there. Israel is defiled. For you also, O Judah, a harvest is appointed when I restore the fortunes of my people. Pretty dire warnings, but hidden in there is God saying, this is what I really want. I don't want all the stuff you guys are doing. This is what I want. You mess that up, but if you can get this right. Let's read the commentary real quick. How full Scripture is of tender invitations. Come, let us return. This opening verse is closely connected with Hosea 5.15. The hand that smote was the fathers who waited to welcome the prodigal nation and healing the binding and binding up. When the sun seems to dip below the horizon, we begin to travel toward its rising again. Then we follow on to behold the glorious dawn of the next day, which is prepared for us. Presently, we catch the first glimpse and soon comes into its full splendor. The sun does not move toward us, but we toward it. So when the soul turns towards God, if only it is willing to do his will, it has begun to follow on toward the light of his countenance, which presently will be revealed in its full radiance. God's favor is also compared to a fertilizing rain for its certainty and refreshment. You can find that in Genesis 8.22. That's awesome. Now we go New Testament. Where they're literally quoting Hosea. Matthew 9.13, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. If you can stop and, and, and think about that for a minute, it should give you pause. Now that's Matthew 9.13, but go right down here to Matthew 12.7 and look what it says. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guilt, guiltless. Then Matthew 5, 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they receive mercy. Just like we talked about grace in the previous video, now we have mercy. These are all cornerstones of a Christian life. But let's go into Matthew 9 and look at what Matthew 9 says. Matthew 9, 13. Okay, so here's Matthew 9.13. And this is Jesus, because it's in red. So, at the beginning, Jesus heals the paralytic. 
But let's go down here. Jesus calls Matthew. As Jesus passed on from there, he, called, he saw a man called Matthew sitting in the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Then they go into questioning him about fasting. The friend of sinners. The name Levi indicates that Matthew sprang from a priestly line. He had lost all self-respect to become an abhorred instrument of Roman government, the tax collector, collecting dues on the merchandise that crossed the lake. But our Lord sees veins of gold and precious gems in most unlikely places, and he detected the apostle and evangelist that was that was in this despised publican. Whenever a man is found by Christ, he sets himself to find others, and the Lord is willing to cooperate in any effort to bring others to know him. He will sit with perfect grace among publicans and sinners, letting them, lifting them to his own pure and holy level. He is always to be found where there are sick, sin-sick souls, and where hearts are famished for love and joy. He is with them as their bridegroom. But the joy of Christ will make for itself its own impression. The ancient forms will not suffice. The old skin bottle will not contain the ferment of the new wine. How wonderfully Christ could extract lessons from familiar objects. Amazing. Now we'll go to Matthew 12.7. Here's 12.7. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. Oh, look at what we're getting into here. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields of the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck heads of grain to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him? How he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, the showbread, um, which it was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? I tell you something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Who are the guiltless? Those operating under the Holy Spirit? those operating in freedom and in, in truth and in grace. Yet what do we have going on? Grace preachers being attacked left and right. The right use of the Sabbath. The Pharisees had introduced a large number of minute and absurd restrictions on Sabbath observance. So our Lord set himself to recover the day of rest for the use of the people. Remember, the Sabbath wasn't for God. The Sabbath was for man. He never hesitated, therefore, to work miracles of healing on that day, and so set at defiance the Pharisees of their evil amendments. He was showing mercy. He contended also that all ritual observance must take the secondary place, and that the primary concern must always be the deep and pressing claims of humanity. Thus it was perfectly legitimate for David to eat the showbread, because they were hungry, they, had, they were in battle. Even if a sheep should fall into a pit on the Sabbath, it would be lifted out by the most uh, punctilious of ritualists. How absurd and illogical is it to prohibit deliverance to this man with his withered hand. Notice that this man's condition is symbolic of many who pose as good Christians but do nothing. They have the power but do not use it and it becomes atrophied. The power can be given back by Jesus. Dare to act and you will find yourself able to act. Are we not getting lessons here? Is he not schooling us here? Meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes. Uh, let's read in Micah. Micah 6, 8. He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and loving kindness and walk humbly with your God. This is Old Testament. This is under the law. And what is he saying? What does the Lord require of you? That you do justice that you do then and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. 
So under the law, he's saying, here's what I require. And what are these things here? They fulfill the commandments given by Jesus. Believe, which is the work of God, and love. Simple, easy, no law. There are no law on those that are led by the Spirit. That's scripture. Uh, 1 Samuel 15, 22. This is 1 Samuel. And Samuel said, Has the Lord has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to listen than the fat of rams. Now they think obeying is the sacrifice. No. Obeying is better. What did he tell you to do? Believe and love. So again, we're seeing more and more confirmation and more proof. Obeyance of the law in the Ten Commandments does not help you. And it does not please God. Because if you could do the simple things like love and obey His commandment to believe, all the other things will be added to you. But people want to be justified. They are living according to a lust of the flesh. Trying to fulfill the desires of the flesh. And they condemn themselves by doing so. Romans 12, 1 through 2. This has new meaning now in, in this light. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Listen. Listen close. Because a lot of people think carnally at this moment. But watch. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. It's not physical sacrifice. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Do not be conformed to this world and its teachings and the teachings of men. Name a megachurch. Name what the church has been changing for 200 years. Come out of the, her, my people. Come out of that and enter into this. But be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, which we've done many times, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You can't get any easier than that. But it's just more confirmation. Look at this. Now he's telling you sacrifice. Remember in Romans 12, 1, 2. It says right here, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Well, what, what is a living sacrifice? Because you kill the sacrifice, right? Hebrews 13, 15. Through him, let, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of the lips that acknowledge his name. Now you see the sacrifices. Now you see what he's referring to. Giving thanks, prayer, supplication, confession. Not Roman Catholic confession. Talking to God, telling him how you feel. He loves you. He wants you to talk to him and tell him about how you feel. If you're in doubt, tell him your doubts. If you're in fear, tell him your fears. If you have questions, tell him your questions. And you'll be amazed at how he answers them. A lot of people have given me testimony saying, I, I, <coughs> I was in prayer today and talking to the Lord today and had this question today. And I open up YouTube and your video is the first one on my feed. And I watched it and it answered my question. Guys, this is not about what people make it out to be. Now, you know why the grace preachers are so attacked and such a small group. And we see those camps getting bigger. We've lost people recently. See, when you read all the scriptures, you learn these things. When you submit to the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit lead you, the Holy Spirit leads you into these things. They condemn us and call us condemned, saying that we're not obeying God, yet we're doing the very thing they're not doing which is obeying God by believing and trusting in Him. John 1 29, remember with the video about grace? The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
So did he only take away the sins up until the moment you were saved? Or did he take away all sin? He died once for all sin. That's in the scriptures too. So clearly we see what's going on here. Clearly we see. Well, here's, here's more sacrifices. Look, here's the sacrifices he like, and it's in Psalm. It's Old Testament. That the, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. He draws near to people like that. That's, uh, that's many of us. Very next Psalm 51. It's, it's in Psalm 51 still. Very next verse. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. This is why you got to read your Bible. This is why you guys got to use open Bible. Because open Bible opens the door to the rabbit hole for you to chase down and do research. Because look at the scripture we find in here. Amazing. 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 And I never cease to be amazed at, at what he shows me in scripture. This was just by a thumbnail. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. That goes along with what I just did on about grace. Grace, mercy, what's after that? Love. Guys, he's talking to us. He's speaking to us. He's speaking to everyone. Even those people over there. They're still watching these videos. I know Rhonda's watching my videos. I know Joan is watching my videos. I know Fruit of the Testimonies is watching my videos. I know Shelly's watching my videos. I know Saved by Grace is watching my videos. All those other people, I know they're watching. Guys, this is the scripture. This isn't me. You should be able to see this. At some point, this has got to break through that stone in your heart and show, show you the truth and what he's trying to tell us. Lay your pride down and read the Bible with a new set of eyes. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I'll see you in the next video.